and start screen sharing. So it's with um, uh, considerable uh, regret that I, I, I need to bid so many um, who have joined our sessions here goodbye for this uh, this event. It's been tremendous to, to lead it and a uh, real honor and and a um, and real uh, matter of, of exhilaration. Um, I had mentioned to someone in the boot camp that um, I had run boot camps, um, you know, uh, from the beginning of the pandemic sparsely. After many years of running, sometimes as many as five a year, maybe even six some years. Um, during my succumbent to the health system, I wasn't running any, and those that I did run more recently. I ran online and um, uh, I found, I was anticipating this um, being quite physically, uh, physically more physically demanding based on past memory. But what I actually found more than that is, is it was really exciting. It was really exciting to be particularly rubbing shoulders with people here, which is tremendous, um, interacting with folks um, and and even the online material. And it's, it's material that really, speaks to me. Um, uh, it is the first time we've run this in three years, or not. and um, you know, the world has changed quite a bit, and I appreciate you bearing with sort of the updates to the material, and I'm full of sort of um, thoughts on how to do this even better next time, but I want to, you know, express my gratitude and appreciation for those who have, have borne with uh, this boot camp. Um, We've covered a lot of ground from the basics of agent-based modeling to uh, you know, the conceptual foundations of, of uh, model, model uh, boundary setting, scope setting, conceptualization, to elements of model formulation more mathematically, and then model implementation in any logic. Um, uh, we are touching on an area that is is desperately needed and um, which has huge potential with it now, particularly because of some of the trends about which I spoke this morning, you know, the rise of, of big data, um, data that collectively can allow you to triangulate understanding about a world, but which speaks, you know, in different tongues about the underlying world. Um, and we need models to make sense of it more than ever. And we need models that in some sense um, can capture the richness of context and the richness of, of longitudinal portrait that um, we can increasingly secure or evidence from our data. Um, whether time series of wastewater data or, or, or data from social media or data from smartphones or you know, um, case data or data from electronic health records, administrative data, there's a growing number of real promising data sources that are at once longitudinal, um, that, are, that are recommended by variety, with fairly high veracity um, and velocity, and high volume. And these tools, these tools of agent-based modeling, allow us to depict context in a very rich way, mechanism in a very rich way, and outcomes in very rich and they provide us means of making sense of data from the world that's of diverse sorts, relational data with, with uh, networks, uh, data on spatial, geographic, data that's from individuals longitudinally, from collectives longitudinally, as well as cross-section, and a variety of other types of data as well. Um, these models permit us to build theory and to cross check theory about why we see certain patterns in our daily, in our data source. Um, and to provide salient understanding for what might be driving those data sources and those patterns and what, and how they might change um, if we alter um, factors um, amenable to, to control by decision. Um, this, this boot camp, I hope, has also suggested to you ways that you can bring together multiple 
types of modeling together under one roof because it's not a matter of choosing one at the disservice of the other. It's a matter of choosing artfully how to mix them together on the same project uh, and within the same model. And this is not a speculative matter. The value delivered by it is not speculative. It is clear, it is compelling, and it is now. Uh, and um, I hope the boot camp has given you some, some glimpse of it. But I hope it's also reminded you of the human context of modeling. The models are powerful storytelling vehicles. And it's one of the strengths of agent-based models that they can tell stories at different levels. They can tell stories at a public health level of the population as a whole, but they can also tell very human stories at an individual level that are rich and compelling and speak to the experience of stakeholders, people with lived experience, et cetera. And models of these sort, the fact that they tell these, weave these narratives allow us to leverage multiple lines of insight and tacit knowledge to elicit, elicit data. And models that tell stories are ultimately models they get listened to. Um, model, you know, they'll more likely to get listened to with rich stories being told. This is a field like the practice of data science in health or machine learning in health, areas where I also contribute which is a team sport. You know, we're, we're dealing here with an area where we need interdisciplinary teams to lend insight. We're often dealing with gnarly problems where we need that interdisciplinary, interdisciplinarity anyway, but you know, it does require bringing to the table some people with computational background as well as those with health science background. And, um, and often those with social science backgrounds as well. Sometimes demography or you know, people um, from health services background, et cetera. Um, and it's in this context that you know, we're, we're, we're addressing this, this area of agent-based modeling. But I think you will have recognized the wisdom of Jeff McDonald's quip um, about this boot camp that the hardest thing, the hardest thing for it indeed, most emphatically, is what 90% of them are, or 95. Um, and it really gives me no end of pleasure to be able to tell you that, um, that going forward, I think um, we'll have a set of resources that better speak to needs in this area. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited by two components. Um, uh, first of all, I, Maybe three. I mean, there's a really notable shift that's occurring right now in a number of different areas of health um, towards embrace of these techniques. Um, here in Canada, um, quite a lot of work with um, uh, addictions and mental health. One of the areas I do a lot of work, both in Canada and overseas in um, in Australia, uh, bringing together parties from a wide variety of, part of, of backgrounds to address addiction. And um, uh, I'm really excited by this because I think this is an area that has been somewhat underserved, um, certainly underserved societally, but also underserved by advanced analytics more generally and, and um, agent-based modeling, as well as dynamic modeling more specific. And it's one of these areas you really want a, an agent-based model. Um, my colleague, Jeff McDonald, who's led many system dynamics modeling projects in this area, has commented to me that you know, his conviction is really for a lot of the questions there to grapple effectively with them. You do need that individual level formulation where you can capture individual history of particular individuals uh, over, over time, particular people over time. Um, but you know, as a community practice of modeling practice coming together in, in this area, and I see it certainly being catalyzed in the infectious disease modeling area um, and a good prospect for it in chronic disease modeling. Um, one of the things I'm most excited about as well, besides the general increasing interest across the health spectrum in modeling that has you know, been one of the areas where the pandemic has advanced thinking. 
um, the need for modeling, the importance of modeling is, is in classroom area. And, and I'm really pleased to tell you that this coming term, I'm offering for the first time in, a, in 10 years, um, a full length semester long, extensively resourced course in agent-based modeling uh, for health. Um, uh, this is being offered through the Fields Institute here in Canada. Um, and it's going to go into some of the topics explored within this boot camp in a lot more conceptual depth. It is a free course. It is a course which Fields is not charging for and which I'm offering. Um, uh, I certainly don't, don't, don't benefit from it financially, um, but I'm, I'm, yes, it's online. And um, this is my second course with Fields. I taught a course, uh, some of you know, in systems data science, the meshing of those two areas um, this past January. And this course is gonna be even more, even richer. And um, it's gonna take what I did 10 years ago for a full semester course at MIT, and this is gonna take it farther. Um, I'm really excited about it. Um, and, uh, it will be online. It'll be Tuesday, Thursday, 10.30 to 12 Saskatchewan time, which will be probably at a different time, depending on what time in the semester you're talking about for your times, because we don't change far. Um, but um, it will be offered this year. And I, I can't tell you how fired up. It's just awesome. And you will probably see some people from here taking it. And it's of a richness that I'm advising all my students to take it because, um, you know, even someone like Wade, there's going to be some conceptual material there um, on agent-based modeling that um, I think will be new, new to me. And I, I really think there's, there's a lot to be gained by this course for everyone. It will be a project course. There's be projects as part of it um, where students can, can pursue projects, ideally together in groups, otherwise separate. And so it, it's going to bring the promise of this boot camp a lot further, um, and you know I'm planning out the details of it now, but um, it's going to be well beyond anything you've gotten here in certain areas. What you've learned here, though, will put you just in a fantastic position to take advantage of. It. Those who have attended this event would be positioned outstandingly to really go far in this course and excel in it. Um, you'll have the the basic background in terms of how to go about pursuing these skills, the basic skills in, in, in pursuing agent-based modeling, all the basic concepts, and you'll be able to appreciate so many other things there, including example models and pursue you know, projects that are worthy of. Um, we will, of course, be trying to provide the guidance on those projects that we're providing to you and the hackathon. We're gonna try to make sure that people from all different backgrounds are you know, supported well for this course in delivering on projects. Some of that will occur because of cross-disciplinary teams or ideally interdisciplinary teams, but uh, some will, will occur because of our oversight. I am expecting large signups for this. And before I had a link to this in these slides, and I don't know if it's a, it's a, um, it's a thing which is coming up. I, I don't actually see it, which again makes me think that this lost something. But I will just note that in the background materials, I have put um, also a link to this course. You notice it says the instructor will be teaching a full semester course on agent based modeling for health. And this is the, uh, the link for it. Okay. Um, so if you're going to sign up, I would suggest signing up soon, okay? Um, because seats will go quickly. And if I get more than 100 people, I'm gonna have to be very careful about scaling because um, uh, we don't, in terms of resourcing of TAs, we don't have you know, huge amounts. Um, but so sign up early for this um, if, you're, if you're interested, I'm glad to tell you. Um, so Tuesday, Thursdays, um, there may be some additional lab sessions for that, uh, et cetera. Really, 
I'm really chuffed about it, as they say in this world. Really excited about it. Um, I do recommend Scott Page's model thinking course. Um, I think we have a colleague, uh, Anton, on the on the the line here from from Michigan, um, and uh, some others of you. I know Michael. You know Scott Page. Scott Page is just awesome. He's a fantastic colleague, um, brilliant guy, head of the Center for Complex Systems at uh, at Michigan, and and um, you know just uh, very insightful. And his model thinking course um, goes beyond agent-based modeling. Agent-based modeling is a, you know, it, is in, is probably the the foremost modeling method that has shaped so many of the ideas that are presented in the course. But, but the course is so much more than that, and it's a brilliant course. So I would suggest anyone interested in the system science perspective for health or any other. That's really a great course. Yeah. So. Um, it's not health specific, but it's broader than that. But it really helps you think differently from a system science perspective in a pretty profound way. And and um, I would I would suggest that you know that it's a wonderful investment and, and worth all the time. Um, I will note that um, I teach a dynamic modeling course. This will be taught next in January, and many of my students. Here um, all of my students, except young, um, have have taken this course, um, and um, this course is not a prerequisite to this one up here. But this is a general dynamic modeling course, and agent-based modeling is it's it's roughly a third of it to uh, half of it. And um, this goes into system dynamics modeling. It goes into discrete event simulation, and um, it also has a project component. So if, if anyone's interested in kind of broader system science, a lot of the examples are in health um, and would, you know, are, are looking for a cross methodology perspective um, in one that, you know, brings multiple lenses, sometimes in the same lecture from different approaches like system dynamics, aggregate modeling, and, and agent-based modeling. I, I think this course is good and it's getting better over time. I, I overhauled it during my secondment um, to the health system, and um, and uh, I'm continuing to really invest in it. I, I would also note for agent-based modeling, Volker Grimm teaches a week-long course at Humboldt State University in California, which is, uh, oh, you, you've taken that as well. Yeah, good course. Right. Yeah, exactly. That that was it. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And incidentally, pattern oriented modeling will be one of those conceptual areas I cover during my course. Because I, I I think it's a very powerful um idea and one that in some fields like ecology, Volker Grimm has really advanced, you know, um to really good effect. Um, um and I would just say that, you know, we're trying to figure out the ecosystem of boot camps now. And one of the things I'm thinking about is, is kind of having an intermediate level model building boot camp. So those who have the basic understanding of, 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 of agent-based modeling, but want to come for something that brings them to a higher level yet. Uh, and, and that would allow us to cover, you know, some, some, a, uh, a lot of additional richer material yet. Um, so our group at U of S is, you know, has a lot of activity in this area and, and in the health sphere, we're particularly active. Um, uh, I, I will say that, you know, for those, many of those in this boot camp have sought further collaborations or engagements with us or, or involvement. I would say that you know we kind of have we have an ecosystem consciously built up here with a built with a system science perspective, and that ecosystem crosses over um, uh, to many different spheres. Um, it crosses over, you know, in the course area of which I just spoke, but also on um, class projects. So we look for partners. So I look for parties who can sponsor projects. And sometimes these are people who have never taken 
information model. Never seen information modeling before. Had some great stakeholders who do that, um, but are open to the ideas. We have others like Cheryl Waldner um, who, who do advance, you know, to have some involvement in, in um, modeling projects themselves. Cheryl's quite advanced, but there's others who have some involvement and they sponsor projects. And basically students undertake projects with these stakeholders. Um, and we've had some wonderful, you know, partnerships of student teams with stakeholders building models for them. There's no cost. It just, what it takes is time on the part of a stakeholder to sort of meet with the students several times in the semester, five times. So Eric did a project like this um, with stakeholders over in Australia. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so if anyone's interested in, you know, trying projects on for size, trying something out. Um, think about having a, a student team work with you to build up an example model in that area. Um, and at the least, you'll know how not to do it. And chances are you'll get some really good ideas for how to do it. And it's even possible you'll get out a, a pretty nifty model. And there are some pretty nifty models that come out. Um, Eric's included, Amanda's with uh, Saskatchewan Health Authority, work for chronic wasting disease on, on, on deer populations, um, many other models than you. Um, we do sponsor internships. So if you know, you're looking to have a student who will work for you, um, we, we, we like those. We've sent many, a handful of students over to Australia. I think six, Wade is one of them. Wade was in Sydney for quite a while. Um, in, in collaborations and, um, you know, we, we try to have these incubators here, but also hackathons. Um, like we're having next week, um, to really push a project forward in the course of, of five days. Um, in incubators and hackathons don't move out in a very powerful way. Um, you know, we do do contract work and, 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 and some hiring, and there's a lot of hiring and interest that I'm connected with in, in students that graduate um, for various partners. And, and uh, you know, I think student exchanges are also things we're interested in. Um, right, um, you know, theses in areas are also, you know, things we like to do with partners, et cetera. Um, I, I will say, you know, I, I articulated a certain, took a certain stance with respect to systems data science that I mentioned here. And um, I do think, that in today's environment, this interface between modeling and data is a particularly rich topic. And it's one we just touched on in this bootcamp, but I kept on alluding to it. Um, and I have a separate bootcamp and a class on, on system data science, um, this combination of them where the whole is woven into one class. And it includes a set of machine learning techniques used with models um, that you know, may be of interest uh, to people. Um, uh, and you know it's worth you knowing that I'm a teacher in this area, and, and if if you're interested in learning more, you know it's worth um, it's worth talking to me. Probably figure out when I'm going to offer it next, etc. I did offer that um, back in um, June, um, uh, and you know I'll, I'll probably offer it again sometime in the next year, and trying to figure out when. Okay, so those are all my sort of uh, remarks in, in closing. I wanna thank everyone here who's, who's come to the bootcamp for your attention, the, the, the honor of your attention, um, particularly for such long hours. Um, uh, I'm gonna see if I can get back feedback uh, an evaluation form and see if we could get feedback from people to help give us some guidance as to how we can improve the um, uh, the, the, you know, delivery of value to you, um, the effectiveness of these materials and boot camps. So I'll be circulating an evaluation form. If, if I could ask you to consider filling it out in coming weeks. Um, and, uh, you know, I welcome discussions here, but um, uh, it's been fantastic. And I hope you've derived some value in terms of understanding and in terms of, um, of uh, insights how these methods could be applied in your areas. And um, it's uh, 
always just a tremendous opportunity to be able to interact both with the online group and, and with the group work. So thank you very much. Um, I look forward to further interactions with all of you. And for those here for the incubator, I'm really looking forward to pushing forward over the next day so that tomorrow, when the incubator is brought to the close, we'll be able to um, have a lot to, to show and tell. Um, so yes, Yom. Great. Yes, it's for credit, yeah. Um, so it's a uh, official fields course. And uh, thank you, uh, Sarah. Um, it's just an honor to have you here. Um, the fields course is for credit. Uh, fields is at University of Toronto and they um, run a variety of, of courses of, of varying sorts, um, some others in system science. Uh, and, um, and this is one of their official course opening uh, offerings. I will say for anyone who's with the U of S, I'm also launching it as an 898 course here at the U of S. So it's, it's a formal graduate course at the U of S. And, you know, that's, uh, so it's gonna be kind of a, a really formal course with credit at, at two different uh, places. Yes, sir. It's not, <laughs> I would, the U of S doesn't allow me to offer for free. Um, Yes, you could. Oh, yeah, and I'm deadly serious. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, graduate students have to take courses, and so if you want this to count towards one of your courses, obviously it would have to be a U of S course. Um, although you might be able to apply for transfer credit. You know, um, it's an interesting. I'm not sure how it would work, but you gotta you gotta look into it. But the basic deal is there's no cost to it. It feels. But get signed up soon because I think the demand for it is quite large, and it's going to start September first. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Okay. I see. Okay. The good to know about I I wasn't aware of that. I do know in the past we've had folks from. A variety of countries, you know, attending. Um, uh, it's it's good to be aware of it. It is a course funded through grant funding, and it's probably one of those things where they try to prioritize. You know, it's Canadian grant funding, and try to prioritize Canadian students. So good to know. Yeah. So I would, you know, you folks would be top priority if anyone were here wanted to take it. Just try to sign up soon because at some point I'm going to have to say like. That's all I can handle um, in, ter in terms of students. Um, yeah, Maya. Yeah. Yeah, I will be, I will be delivering um, this lecture on hierarchical modeling tomorrow. And um, uh, it's, you know, I'm gonna take stock of other things. It's, it's conceivable that I'd have a lecture on something else. Um, but I, I really want to use most of the day very squarely for the project. Um, so I do expect for sure, though, that I will give this um, ever. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is something I have to work with uh, the TAs on. But uh, the basic gist is same place, same time, food will be delivered. Um, we'll have tickets. They should have found Larissa over lunch. Um, awesome. And um, you know we'll we'll take care of all that again. Um, the the only the only thing I will caution about, and and I'm going to be sending mail tonight. And look for the mail, is we want to be very careful about which doors are guaranteed open to this day. I apologize for those attending online because I know this is not directly germane, but um, the deal is that uh, on weekends the door um, security situation changes drastically in this building. And um, we just need to confirm with the security which ones will be open so that you're guaranteed to come through. Um, I think the main door um, that leads into Science Place uh, is to the road just out there, kind of the main door with the handicap entrance and, and pictures on the wall and so on. That will be open, um, is, is what I'm seeking. And there'll be some other doors. It's just, we'll try to send information about which specific doors to try to go through. 
But if you have problems, write to us and, and we'll be there. And I'm going to try to have students down there to, to keep an eye out for people. Okay. But um, I think we'll start tomorrow at nine so I can get a little bit more beauty sleep. That's okay. <laughs> That's kind of impaired. Um, so, um, okay. Any, any more questions? Any more? Um, thank you, Sanju. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks very much, Monica. Uh, any more questions or things people want to bring up? Okay, so um, five o'clock now, and I'm willing to do a little bit more. Oh, uh, extra neuron just fired mine. I'll be doing the extra um, uh, Java lecture, the, the second Java lecture. Okay, let's 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 go to boot camp battle stations. Okay, and uh, we'll we'll get it done. Uh, thank you again, Tina. Thank you for your contribution. Yep. Thanks to everyone online there. We look forward to interacting with you folks further. Great. Okay. Okay, let's get these incubator projects on the roll. Awesome. Oh, it's yeah, I um, I have a confession. I have a confession.